afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your patience. We were looking for a speaker. Would you mind just scooping down? Because actually, uh, I think um, Mr. Al Hamid is also running late. So thank you for your patience. Um, my name is Christiana Fragola, and uh, I am the regional director of the C40 Climate Leadership Group for the region of Europe. Um, I suspect some of you may have heard of C40. We are a global network representing 8% of the population globally, and we work with cities and especially mega cities around the world. Uh, currently, we actually work with 69 cities, even though our network is still C40, uh, to help them tackle climate change and become more resilient. So sustainability for cities is very much something that the organization I work with focuses a lot, and I'm glad to see some of our cities, a lot of our cities actually, represented here at our Congress. So I, we have three of our speakers here. Um, I think there are some technical issues which I'm sure our smart cities people will be able to solve. But maybe then, rather than start from Yan Jin, um, if you don't mind, Andreas, I would start from you. Is that okay? So here we have the head of urban planning and transport for Vienna, which is another leading edge city on so smart cities. I think you guys recently had a congress about or a conference on this as well, right? And so without further ado, please take it away. And I may just bug you at around 10 minutes, but you know, we do have a little more time since the speaker is missing. Thank you. Yeah, hello. Hola a todos aquí. So if I get carried away, oh you God. stop me. Yes. You help me to be time efficient. So I just want to Are you okay? tell you. So. so I just want to tell you some of the things we're doing right now in Vienna and the situation of Vienna and what we do. We're a growing city and we want to be and we are a smart growing city and this means we're also a sustainable city and sustainability is a big issue to the city of Vienna. Uh, okay. This does not work. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. I guess this is really the, the lucky room. This is a re really, really a, a try with. So, can someone please back there come and. Well, we can see Vienna. Yeah, you see the core of Vienna. <laughs> But maybe you can help me to, I, I haven't got a lot of slides, so I won't bore you. No, it doesn't work. Where do I have to go? Yeah, you can. Yeah. How do but, ah, now, okay. Look, the, the lady came and it works, so <laughs> that, that's, Thank you, that's how it should be. So, yeah, I told you, we're a growing city. Vienna right now, in October, has uh, 1.8 million inhabitants. It's the highest number of inhabitants since the 30s. So we're a growing city. This does not scare us. On the contrary, we're proud of it and, and it's because the growth is a good sign for our city. And eventually the growth started when the Iron Curtain fell. So you know, mm. this tells you a lot about cities and cities need their surrounding and the surrounding of Vienna was bigger than uh, the, 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 the size of Austria, you have to say so. So we're growing since the late 80s and 90s. Um, brings us a lot of opportunities. Growth is also a sign for how well People can live in Vienna, can work in Vienna. It's a sign of how great the city is, and it's a sign of that we are resilient and we are, have a power for the future. But the resources don't grow. All of us know this. We are reaching uh, the, the breaking point with petrol and, and all these um, uh, energy things. We are growing, but the size of our city doesn't grow. Vienna has 415 square kilometers. Now they're living a lot of people and they really live of more people. The photo you see with the, this beautiful river side is Vienna too. So it's not only the imperial city of the, the K and K monarchy, but this is a national park in, this, in, in between the city 
and it's the Danube fl flatlands. And we pres try to preserve our green areas also. And what we strive for is to grow, but not on cost of nature. So we try to keep the, uh, the ratio we have of about 50% active, productive green areas. We want to keep it and we will redevelop green areas alongside as we develop, develop areas where we're going to construct. And another thing you can see here is the mobility in Vienna over the times. In 1993, it was a, about 29% of public transport and 40% of uh, transport by autocars. Now, in 2012, it's 39% public transport and only 27% car traffic in Vienna. And this is a ratio that means that right now in Vienna there's less traffic on the streets than it was in the 90s. Hmm. And we want to keep on with this and we try to do everything to go ahead with this in this direction and want to have car traffic only with 20% in 2025, with this, which is the horizon of the urban development plan. I'm going to talk about it uh, shortly. And we want to get to, 20, uh, to only 15% in 2030. And we are making our policies to, to get there. So what is our mantra as a city? Every city has a mantra right now. Ours, ours is Vienna, a city for life. And our top priorities are quality of life and social inclusion. We are, you, mo, most of you will know the ranking of the Mercer, uh, Mercer ranking, Mercer study. And Vienna is the city with the highest quality of life on planet five times in a row. And it is so right now. I apologize to Barcelona, which is a really great city. And I apologize to all the other cities that are great cities too. But right now, Mercer thinks Vienna is the greatest city of it all. And I tell you this not to boast here, but this has something to do with what the city does. The quality of life comes from a high quality of, of uh, environment, of green areas. And it comes from the high quality of services the city gives to its uh, citizens. That means education, health care, uh, that means housing, public housing, that means everything of it. The waste disposal, you have to have a clean city, not to, got, to, get, not to get into high crime rates and so on. So we, this is like a, a legacy. It's been the, the most livable city in the world. It's not something where you can rest on. It's a legacy for the future. And this is where we want to go. So what do we do? I'm a city planner. I'm the head of the urban department for city planning and, and development. So we are making a lot of strategies. We just made two strategies, um, call it out now. We have a framework strategy, a smart city strategy. I got it here. It's a long version and a short version. You can download it. You have the direction on, um, on the screen. It's downloadable in English also. I've left some copies on the Austrian uh, stand outside, which is, I have to look at it. It's, the, it's a small one, but it's close to, to, the, to the center here. It has the number F631. It's like the Austrian info point. It's very small. Austria is a small country. Go there, get it. Uh, I'll, I'll dwell on, upon the smart city strategy a, a bit more. And we are also uh, have the urban development plan also a short version, I got it here. You can get it there or you can download it also in English. And uh, we are working on a lot of different of other strategies. You can read them, I won't read them to you. It shows you that we are working as a city on our development a long time and with, that we keep on working at it. Um, the urban development plan, I mean, I don't know how many of you know Vienna. I think, I suppose, some of you will. Great. <laughs> Ten points. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's no, but it's, sure. it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful it's European city. It's dense. Point, and actually. to me, the, the model of the European city is the model of the city of the future. Cities don't have to look very different. It's all about human scale. It's, you have to feel comfortable as a human being in these cities. 
It's not about high rises and big spaces for transport systems that are not uh, on the human scale. It's about the human scale. It's about mixed use. It's about a dense city where a lot of life can get along. It's about public spaces. We're doing a lot of projects to increase the quality of our public sp spaces. We opened only last week a large pedestrian zone in the Vienna's biggest shopping uh, street. The, it was a, here are two politicians from Vienna, three politicians from Vienna, and they know it was quite a discussion, but now almost everybody is happy as always. People are critic, but then if they see the results, th good things are recognized. So, yeah, let's go further, since otherwise I'll have some problems. No, no, you just have four minutes and a okay, half. Okay, this is not that, that much, so <laughs> Vienna is a smart city. And what, what do we understand as a smart city, as a sustainable city? Mm -hmm. For most of all, or the first of all, it's about, uh, it's about high and socially uh, balanced and quality of life, as I told you. We, are, we want to be a city of inclusion. It's, and it should be a very livable city, the most livable city also in 2050 as it is now in, in 2040 for every Viennese people. Doesn't matter the sex, the race, religion, sexual inclinations, nothing matters. If you know the European Song Contest was won by Conchita Wurst, it's a transvestite, so this is what we are proud of as, as a city, as a, as, a, as a society that we have these people and these people are ahead of us and, and, and we host the, the song contest next year and we'll make a sustainable smart project out of it. It's clear smart city is all about r reduction of, of resources. It's, we want to be in 2030 only use 35, as a, reduce the per capita um, um, green gas emissions to by 30, 35% and by 80% in 2050. That means that in 2050 we are a, a 2,000 watt society, that the per capita mm. need of primary energy is 2,000 watt. And many people may say, well, this is, yeah, you can, you can say these things very easily. You have to do it. I, I can tell you, we will do it. We are already a 3,000 watt society which is a very, very good level to be. So we have really, really, really a, a very few emissions with traffic, traffic, uh, heating of buildings, and so forth. And we all know this. You can only achieve these things if we use uh, new te technologies. This is a very, very important part of it. It's not the center, but it's very, very important, and it's Im important also for economy for the economy development of the city and its region. And this has got to do with education, with innovation. And we want to be an innovation leader all the time to 2050, which is the, the, the horizon of the smart city strategy. And yeah, I got carried away. You see this, the photo here is not, we, don't, we do not only make smart plans, we make smart projects too. This is a photo of a citizen's solar power plant. It's a, a system where people, the citizen, can buy panels of, of solar uh, plants. They have got a, a fixed uh, return of investment, and the city can install big uh, solar plants. We have right now 15 of them, which in each of it gives um, energy for 150, 200 households. So we are doing a lot of, of projects, also not only plans. So, and Vienna, and this is something I want to, to give to you, to share with you, uh, is more than a city administration. And this is very important for all of us. I know a lot of, of, um, uh, of, of countries are in deep crisis and a lot of cities have not much money. The money in, in Vienna also has its limits. We're we are good, well doing, but it's still we have to struggle. But it's very important to have influence on important things. And the city of Vienna owns almost everything which is important for services. Yeah. You can read it here. The city of Vienna owns or co-owns all of these things. And 
what you can do with it, you can really you have big levers and you can do very a lot of smart things. For instance, if I go to the water supply, Vienna gets his water from the Alps, 100 kilometers away, best water in the world. You have to try it, go to Vienna, open up the, the water, you will be, you will be amazed the, how good the water is. But what we are doing, they have installed mini hydro power plants in, the, in this water system that give energy to 20,000 households. So we can use this and we can do things like this. And we're doing intelligent city lighting. I always told you about Maria Hilferstrasse. We're now with the LEDs, LEDs. We have, they are, have sensors and they're intelligent. So it's a big store like maybe Tara from Spain and with a lot of lightning in the windows. The lamp knows, ah, okay, it's already very, very bright. We, I don't have to work so hard. I reduce the, the intense of my, of my illumination. And if, uh, if there's a small shops or so, where it's not so bright, the lamps will uh, work stronger. So we're doing these kind of things also. And yeah, so I come to an end. When we talk about sustainability, smart cities, then we talk about change management. No technology alone will change anything. And this is one of my mantras. Change is demand, collective actions. And you can't change the planet if we don't change, or if we don't change our way of living. And this ha does not mean that it has to, to be less great than it is right now. It only has to be a bit different. And we have to get the people on the road with us th so that they share the goals and they understand and they share the values and that for instance, somebody leaves his, his car in the, in the parking lot and takes public transport, or somebody makes a better isolation on his apartment, whatever. Yeah? Yeah. We have to do things together, and I'm coming to an end. <laughs> and it was <laughs> really you. great talking here to all of you. Thank you. Muchas gracias, y luego hablamos. Thank you. Thank you, Anders. It's so um, tangible, your enthusiasm for what you're doing. And uh, um, I think that those who have not been to Vienna before will be even more motivated to come. And those who have been, <laughs> um, I think will enjoy it even more. It is really one of the most enchanting cities I've ever seen. It's very, very beautiful. So, and we will have time for Q&A uh, at the end of the presentation, so please do make a note if you have any questions for Andres. And now, see, they're already applauding you. Um, uh, we are now moving to Asia and to China. So Yan Jin Wan, who as you can see, uh, she's the vice manager of Hunt and Harmony, is that right? Um, a development company based in Beijing which uh, is focusing on international technology, but most importantly, Jing Yang has been the initiator, and congratulations on that. Very, very smart of you. <laughs> of the first Civil Smart City Alliance in China. So without further ado, I do invite you, and we do have a couple of extra minutes each for speakers, given that unfortunately one of them is missing, so especially um, if you need translation, you can take advantage of that. The only thing is, as you may have heard, next door they're quite loud. So if you don't mind speaking very closely to the mic, that would be great. Thank you. Hello,中午好。我来自中国通信工业协会。今天是我第三次站在巴塞罗那智慧城市博览会论坛上。也是我第三次带着中国人对智慧城市的研究成果来与各位进行进一步的交流和分享此刻我感到非常荣幸那么今天我的题目正如主持人介绍的是面向参与主体的中国智慧城市运营分析大家看到我这个PPT的第一张片
、研究和规划机构、咨询机构与媒体、资本机构以关以及关联资产，包含房地产。这是六大参与主体，此外还有像我们 CCIA 这样的呃行业协会组织，所有这些主体所服务的对象都是我们的公众。可以说，现在中国的智慧城市建设的方向和思路是以人为本。嗯、呃，我刚刚提到过，嗯、呃，我是又一次站在这个讲台上跟大家分享中国智慧城市建设的一些经验。嗯、呃，与之前相比，我们今天要交流的内容有了更深刻的意义。我们对智慧城市的建设研究也也有了更新的诠释。在中国，智慧城市建设也经历了几个发展阶段，因此，嗯、呃，我们有必要再重新谈一谈智慧城市这个概念。那么我再一次发问：什么是智慧城市？我将中国最具有代表性的认识进行了总结。嗯，首先是中国最大的搜索引擎百度的认识。实际上，百度的认识是面向公众的一个解释。嗯，他认为智慧城市是更高阶段的城市信息化。呃，其次是中国的信息化主管部门，也就是工业和信息化部。嗯，他提出，智慧城市是一种信息技术。和城市的融合，也就是基于两化融合，还有就是我们中国的住房和城乡建设部，他对智慧城市的理解是用智慧的手段去做公共基础设施。而中国在智慧城市领域最棒、最有名的专家吴克全院士，他的认识却是最贴近老百姓的。他说：“老百姓感受的智慧，才是真正的智慧。”那么，我们认为能够与大家分享最准确的解释是，智慧城市的定义不是不仅仅是建立在技术层面，而应该是城市管理体体制机制的革新。总结一句话，这是我们协会的一个研究成果，也就是智慧产业化、产业智慧化。我不知道童生能不能很好的翻译我我这句话啊。嗯，那么我们认为能够与大家分享的最准确的解释是，智慧产业化、产业智慧化。此外呢，我也把在中国政府的发展和引导下，呃，智慧城市的发展是一共经历了三个阶段。第一个是数字阶段，第二个是呃，第二个是第二个是智慧城市的阶段，第三个是信息消费的阶段。那么我仅仅谈谈这第三个信息消消费的阶段。呃，工业和信息化部呢，在去年，呃，一共评选出六十八个信息消费的试点城市。那么，今年这六十八个城市正在进行当中。呃，它的思路是以人为本，基于人的需求，在产业链、资本链和创新链上进行智慧化建设，是充分市场化的一个阶段。嗯、呃，下面我谈谈。呃，这六大主体里的第一个主体，也就是政府。呃，政府呢，在中国智慧城市建设中，普遍存在这么几个特点。由于时间关系，我不一一展开。第一个是建设。呃，因为政府呢，一般提到智慧城市，第一感受就是我要建设，而且建设呢要有任务书，要有行政命令和规划，这是中国的一个特色。第二个呢是规划。但是现在中国智慧城市的规划呢，我给各位在座的厂商也提供一条信息，更趋向于免费化。基本现在中国的智慧城市建设，呃，前期的规划都是企业免费来做的。第三是城市领导者的政绩，这也是中国地方政府建设智慧城市的一大特点。当然，现在中国政府也不仅仅是要用 GDP 来考核地方政府，所以也有也有一些。就是惠民生的项目会在智慧城市建设中进行，呃，建设。另外是资金，然后是公共服务平台。我特别要提一下这个公共服务平台，这个是中国智慧城市和国外的智慧城市建设特别不同的一点。嗯，国外可能更以人为本，中国的政府呢，他们更趋向于做系统集成项目，包括一些平台指挥的那种平台，或者交通平台啦，或者是医疗指挥的这种平台啦。呃，我右侧的这一部分是我列举的几个中国地方城市来建设智慧城市的关键词。时间关系，我也不一一的展开，我仅找几个有代表性的跟大家分享一下。我分享一个最小的城市，它叫马纳斯，是新疆一个只有五万人口的一个小城市，但是它在一个项目的 IT 成本
，却达到了五百万美金。这个是我们今年协会做的一个一个咨询项目，所以我了解的比较深刻。嗯，同时也传导出一个一个就信号：中国智慧城市建设的市场，呃，可以说是它的那个呃规模很大。当然呢，我们中国智慧城市建设也有一些负面的案例，嗯，像营口和曹妃店这类的城市建成之后，很少有人居住，在我们中国被称为“鬼城”。嗯，这个“鬼城”的定义，大家也可以在网上查一下。下一个我要说的是，呃 ，ICT 厂商 ，ICT 厂商我也列举了一些，嗯，我这这一点我也不一一展开。当然也有一些国际化的大公司。也有在座的，我们从中国过来的大企业，比方说浪潮，我这里边没有列举，但是他们其实也是参与智慧城市建设的一些厂商和企业。我要在这张片子里边重点提一下，呃，就是现在公众看不到的，呃，在中国参与智慧城市建设的厂商，比如说乐视，它实际上是一个互联网企业，但是就我们行业协会的研究。嗯，他现在开始做智慧酒店方面的解决方案，以及是围绕着娱乐的智慧社区的解决方案。嗯，还有一些中国传统的制造业的厂商，他们以前是做制造业的，现在也开始转型做智慧城市。呃，我们的一家会员，他在浙江叫达峰，呃，之前也是做那个一些 PCT 加工的，现在也开始搞智慧社区方面的一些工作。呃，还有一家做医疗的、呃、医疗建筑的企业。他现在开始转型做智慧城市的系统集成，并且建成了中国唯一的一个民办的数据中心。嗯、呃，我们行业协会总结这些现象，就是专业服务和增值服务带动整个产业的转型。可以说，智慧城市为中国的经济发展，嗯，注入了一个新的活力和一个新的发展契机。嗯，下面我要讲讲电信运营商。这个电信运营商在中国是一个非常。呃，独立的一个群体，并且是一个垄断企业，它主要分了三类。第一个就是，呃，上面写的这个中国移动，它的这个特点就是无线技术和四 G 技术的应用。第二是做智慧城市顶层设计和系统集成，覆盖面较广的中国联通，然后是做光纤通讯技术的中国电信。三大运营商在智慧城市建设上的侧重点各不同，但是他们有一个共同点。就是在和中国有意做智慧城市建设的政府签约。我右我这个我左手边的这个图，就是一个正在签约的一个一个场面。嗯，那么中国在就运营商层面还有另外一个力量，就是虚拟运营商。目前有牌照的虚拟运营商在中国大概有十几家。嗯，他们的运营模式在我们协会看来不是很清晰，当然成长规模也不显著。嗯，也不排除未来他们会成为中国智慧城市建设领域运营商层面的一个中坚力量。下面我要谈一谈这个呃研究规划，也就是技术层面的呃一张图，这也是可以说是中国智慧城市目前的一个最主要的我们协会的一个研究成果吧，实际上也是我们协会专家的一个一个成果。这张图表呢，首先大家看到的是一个梳子的形状。呃，梳子把儿代表基础设施层面，也就是说云计算层面；梳子齿儿呢，代表更多不同的应用，像水利、交通、安防等垂直行业上的更多应用；梳子柄代表数字交换平台层面的应用。我们认为，智慧城市建设最理想的状态，应该是梳子齿儿越短，代表我们的城市更为智慧，因为它不是垂直化的管理。在信息及系统集成、数据交换这个层面，越不垂直化，数据交换的越多，城市的智慧度也就越高。所以，我们认为这个梳子的模型在中国的智慧城市建设方面是一个比较好的研究成果。当然，也是呃，中国政府，我认为我们这个行业是呃，更应该看到这么一个发展方向，就是我们把那个梳子齿儿越做越短，而不是各个行业不停的垂直管理，造成互不交互。下面谈一下这个，嗯，咨询，咨询这个我也就带过吧。嗯、呃，中国智慧城市在咨询这个层面上还是以会议会展为主。当然，像咱们巴塞罗那这种大型的智慧城市博览会，中国还没有。嗯、呃，可以说巴塞罗那智慧城市博览会也是我们中国在会议会展方面的一个呃学习的方向吧。
。最后，我想谈谈这个第六大参与主体——资本机构。我们以社会资本和房地产为代表，在资本层面，目前中国的一级市场比较关注的是与智慧城市相关的移动互联等民生项目。一级市场之前关注的与智慧城市非常相关的物联网项目，收益都不是很好。我们行业协会作为一家媒体咨询机构，也咨询也接接受过这类的投资机构的咨询，他们实际上在一级市场没有赚到太多的钱，因为物联网项目呢，很多都属于周期比较长的工业项目。当然，二级市场资本层面关注非常多的都是智慧城市。是因为物联网相关板块在二级市场走势都非常好，中国股民在二级市场如果买了这个物联网和智慧城市相关领域的股票，这两年应该都是赚钱的一个状态。嗯，智慧城市对房地产的影响在中国也比较有代表性。中国房地产分为商业地产、工业地产、居民地产和科技地产。那么，智慧城市带动了中国一个新的房地产板块，就是科技地产。目前商业地产是比较饱和的状态，工业地产由于过度开发闲置，正处于停滞阶段；居民地地产目前是处于抑制阶段。而智慧城市给我们的科技地产带来了很多的活力和发展的机会。最后，我要谈一下，呃，公众。实际上，在中国，智慧城市真正的参与主体应该是我们的大众，或者说是真正的受益者是我们的公众。实际上，智慧城市是要切实落实到每一个市民，因为这这是一个以人为本的项目，并且以人为本是智慧城市建设的目标。呃，图片中是我们中国的总理李克强，他在整个国家战略层面对智慧城市建设提出了以人为本的发展思路，推进以人为核心的城镇化建设。第二，我与大家分享一下目前智慧城市在中国的一些大数据。中国已经有这个可能在座的厂商比较感兴趣哈。中国已经有的智慧城市市场额度大概是三百二十六亿美金，未来五年大概是一千三百零四亿美金，已经和在建的呃和待建的智慧城市规模大概是四百座。那么在中国智慧城市市场上的数据，我们以现在非常火爆的互联网三巨头为例，看一下真正贴近民生的智慧化的信息化的厂商。给我们带来的数据分享，实际上他们已经在参与智慧城市建设。首先是百度，中国最大的搜索引擎，它在 PC 端的搜索达到百分之六十，移动端搜索达到百分之七十。百度已经是整个整个中国信息的一个入口。然后是阿里巴巴，嗯，是整个中国电子商务的入口。中国电子商务有三百二十六亿美金的市场规模，阿里巴巴就占到了百分之四十五。实际上呢，阿里巴巴也涉足了更多贴近老百姓的物与物交换的项目和应用。最后是腾讯，腾讯是定义为社交性智慧化应用，它在中国有一个非常厉害的社交软件，可能在座的中国人都在用，叫微信。它在中国的用户量已经达到了七个亿。下面是关于我们协会，这个我就不再赘述，有兴趣的可以会后跟我联系。我也很高兴能够把中国智慧城市建设目前。呃，存在的一些现象和问题分享给大家，希望对在座的厂商和参与的嘉宾有所注意。谢谢大家。Well, thank you, Yanjin. That was. I don't know what I'm talking there. All these things, but anyway, that was quite.、Um, An inspiring presentation, and I look forward to the Q and A. I think we managed to cover the two extremes, from from Vienna, which is a nice compacted city, to China, which is aiming at developing and a historic city, to China, which is aiming to develop 400 new smart cities. I mean, that's that's quite a range that we'll have for discussions later on, and、um, we're still going to stay in Asia. And it is my pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Johnny Wong,、um, who is currently the group director and head, heading the Housing and Development Board in Singapore. And he was telling me earlier that in Singapore, 80% of the population lives in public housing. 
So this is going to be quite a uh, very interesting presentation as well. Thank you very, very much. Okay, good afternoon, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. Very happy to be here to share with you um, what um, Singapore Public Housing is uh, trying to do to build smarter towns and better living, which um, the main focus is to drive sustainability and livability in our towns. Um, I have to apologize because I'm having a little bit of sore throat, so if my voice trail off, uh, sorry about okay. that. I'll give him some. Okay, I'll start off with just giving a little context of Singapore. Thank you so much. <laughs> For our uh, foreign colleagues, um, just to share with you, Singapore is actually a very small state, city-state. Um, we are only about 720 square kilometers with a growing population. Um, now it's about 5.4 million and it's still growing. However, Singapore, um, with very little, if any, uh, natural resources and such limited land space, sustainability is a very key thing when we do urban planning because this is, um, we have to balance all the needs that the nation needs. So, I'll touch more on public housing for this presentation for this afternoon. In terms of uh, public housing, Singapore is unique. Um, as shared uh, earlier, we have this Housing and Development Board where I come from. It is actually the National Hou Public Housing Authority. To date, we have built more than uh, 1 million flats. And yes, we house about 80% uh, of the population. And we are they stretch across 23 towns, which we plan, and we also drive a lot on home ownership, of which uh, about 94% of um, the people living in public housing actually own the flats. But uh, this achievement did not come easy. Um, over the years, we started in 1960s. During that time, um, there was a very big housing problem. People were living in slums, and the housing condition was very poor. The newly elected government back then had this challenge to quickly build uh, public housing. And so the Housing and Development Board was formed. And over the years, we started off with building functional homes. Then we, uh, once we have solved most of the uh, shortage of uh, housing, we went on to uh, focus on quality, comprehensive town planning. And of recent times, we look into driving sustainability and greater livability. I'm really happy to say that uh, uh, most of uh, our public housing, uh, we focus a lot in driving high sustainability and livability in our estates. Uh, the picture you show, uh, that's shown here is actually one of the typical uh, new public housing that we now uh, offer to our residents. But we continue to face new challenges as in any other cities. Things like climate change, the growing population, aging population, and also high aspiration by our citizens, and of course, the need to drive for close, cohesive uh, communities. That is why the Housing and Development Board in 2009, we formed what we call as the Roadmap to Better Living in HDB Towns. Here, our professionals focus on three key trusts. One is to drive for well-designed towns, focus a lot on sustainability, and, of course, not forgetting the hardware, that is community-centric towns. <clears throat> and in terms of sustainability, we develop our own sustainable development framework. This shows um, a glimpse of our sustainable development framework. It actually comprises of three key dimensions, economic, social, and environmental. And we have set out 10 outcomes that we want to achieve from this framework, as shown mm. here divided into these three dimensions. Um, just to give you a little uh, understanding of how the framework works, basically, it first starts with the core, where we look at environment, social, and economic. Then, let's say one of the outcomes, which is actually low carbon development, we will then develop strategies. In this case, it is looking into driving greater energy efficiency and, of course, use of uh, renewable alternative energy. Then for each town, we will lay out what are the strategies that we're going to achieve. And with these strategies, we set out KPIs for the town to achieve. 
And this is linked to our national um, key performance indicators for sustainability, which is actually documented in our sustainable uh, blueprint for Singapore. And of course, we recognize uh, technology and research plays a very key role as our journey to uh, drive for greater sustainability and livability. That's why in 2009, we also formed the research arm of uh, HDB, known as the Building Research Institute, which I come from. Um, the idea is to drive for greater um, technological advancement and see how they can actually be deployed into our towns. And we focus on five key clusters. They are energy, urban greenery, um, water and waste, living environment, and building technology. I won't go through them, but this just gives you a glimpse of some of the technology studies that we are driving. Now, come to SMART. How does this SMART technology play a part in our sustainable development framework? Well, we see this SMART as a layer, a digital layer, that helps us to stretch some of our KPIs. Because earlier, I've shown you that we have already developed how we're going to achieve some of this uh, um, KPIs for the outcomes we want. Well, this SMART enables us to do more. And with that in mind, we actually came up with uh, HDB uh, Smart Town Framework. Now, for this Smart Town Framework, it is important to have the objectives very clear. For our public housing development, for us, it's very clear. We want to achieve livable efficiency and sustainable and safe towns. So, over down here, you can see our framework. At the bottom layer, we have the enabling infrastructure. This is actually the horizontal, we call it, where you deploy sensors, you ensure the communication and connectivity is set in place so that you collect the data in order to carry out data analytics or big data. And then, you go to the next layer, where we call it the application and services layer, where here, we will work with other agencies and the private industry to what we call as verticals, the, all the application and services that can be given to the residents. And we have divided it into four key dimensions, shown here as smart planning, smart environment, smart estate, and smart living. I'll go through each of these dimensions. For smart planning, currently for all our towns, we do carry out comprehensive uh, wind flow studies, solar mapping, and even solar irradiance in order to know how does uh, we bring the wind into our estates and where are the hotspots so that mitigating measures can be, uh, can, be, can be put in place to reduce heat gain. Because Singapore comes from a tropical climate where heat is a main concern for thermal comfort. And then in order to achieve some of the sustainability goals, we have this complex system modelling that gives us an integrated uh, way of knowing if you're introducing green features, how does it affect the uh, town and what are the trade-offs planners have to take into consideration? Things like cost, or does it actually have negative effects on other of the KPIs that we have set? Now that we are deploying sensors to all our towns, we'll be able to get real-time data. And this data allow us to check back, to do validation, to see how our simulation models go. Because towns is not built one day, this allows us to adjust the plans accordingly to what we are actually receiving. And of course, it allows us to do what-if analysis. In terms of smart environment, with the deployment of sensors and also working with other agencies, we are going to integrate these sensors and collect this data to carry out big data analytics. More important, we want to see how this data, environment data can assist us in our town planning. One of it is that we can push some of this information to the residents so that it can help them with their daily lives. Another area is to anticipate uh, if there are any change in the uh, weather patterns in Singapore so that to uh, inform us whether proactive upgrading of infrastructure is required. The other area, of course, is uh, by providing information. We're hoping that this can nudge residents in the right direction in order to play their part uh, for the environment. In terms of smart estate, um, here we want to see how can we maintain our estate better with all this technology. Just to share, currently we're already uh, collecting information for all the lifts that monitor. Uh, we do monitor the performance of all our lifts in our estates. We're also monitoring the amount of energy that is collected from all the solar that we're deploying in the roofs. And of course, the health of the, uh, our buildings. We are going to put in more sensors to measure things like smart irrigation, smart street lighting, and smart um, pumps. 
so that these analytics can enable us to see how we can ma better manage energy, water, and even waste in the estate level. We are also looking at sec enhancing security in our estates. So di in a more diagram manner, this is what it means, where we're collecting all this information and now able to analyze how we can actually do better in managing estates. Just to share with you some of the uh, technology that we are deploying on the ground. Come all new developments in uh, our HDB, we are going to introduce pneumatic waste collection system uh, at district level. What this means is that uh, waste will be sucked from the buildings all the way to just one centralized point. So collection is only at one point. This will reduce the need for the trucks to travel the whole town collecting the waste. Now this we see as a smart move to reduce the amount of, uh, uh, the, to enhance productivity in collecting waste. We'll be putting sensors and on top of that, we will also um, monitor how the suction can be optimized. Next is smart lighting. I think uh, in Vienna, they are already doing smart lighting. We are also doing our share. Here we are talking in terms of like, can uh, data allow us to know where the people flow? So for the, those that where people are flowing, there's no need to dim down the lights. We just have them 100% lighted. But for those areas that we found not many people are going there, they can be dimmed down to about 30%. Only when there's people, then it goes up. We have done an experiment in some of our estate. It can save up to 40 to 50% of the energy for lighting. Now we zoom into the smart living, which is all about the resident. For us, we believe that we do not want to take over the decision of how residents want to deploy smart um, devices or appliances in their homes. But we want to work with the industry. We want to work such that companies can, uh, can have applications and devices that can speak to each other. So we are actually testing some of, uh, with our industry partners in our living labs and then deploy them to actual living conditions, which I'll share with you later. So some of the things we are looking at is elderly care. How can uh, we monitor the uh, health of el elderly and the safety of elderly in their homes? Uh, health care being carried out at home. And even see how to help our residents save energy through things like home energy management system. I mentioned about living laboratories. I think it is important that before all these are deployed in a very large scale to all our uh, housing, we actually test them out in... Uh, what we call as living laboratories. So we have two. One is at Pongol, which is a new town, and the other is at Yihua, which is an old existing town. Mm. For Pongol, we have already carved out a district known as Pongol North Shore. This is how it's going to lo look like, and that's uh, public housing. And we're going to introduce and test out all this uh, smart technology with our partners. We're going to measure the success, and those that are feasible will roll out to the rest of our new towns. But as you know, 80% of the residents are living in existing towns. So we have to go to existing towns and see how to help them. So here at Yihua, we're testing some green features and also some smart technology. And uh, it's more challenging in an existing town because people are living in there. Um, we have to have lots of uh, communication with them in order to ensure that uh, we do not disturb their lives. But more important, it is also a very good laboratory for us to get actual feedback, good data that can help support some of these technologies that we're going to roll out. So um, I'll just end this, like um, I guess the first speaker has mentioned, Andreas, that everybody has, uh, now this have a mantra. For us, our mantra is quite simple. Smarter towns, better living. That's what we're trying to achieve. So with that, thank you. Before I end my presentation, I just want to share with you that in Singapore, we do have this World City Summit. Mm. Um, where the mayors um, do come down and quite international people do come and discuss on areas like sustainability and livability. So I invite you all. I think the next uh, summit is next year. It's every two years. And it will be in Singapore from uh, July 10 to 14. So I hope uh, you would uh, find the time and uh, able to visit our country in Singapore. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. That was really a very informative uh, presentation. No, not too informative. And I love how you had uh, 
the comparison of the new eco town and upgrading the infrastructure of an existing town, city, really, at this point. That's, that's really, really important. Very glad also of how you merge clearly the intersection between sustainability and smart cities, which is, I think, something often uh, mentioned but not clearly laid out as you did. Anyways, I don't want to take the time. I first, uh, before um, I continue with my observation, I'd like to take a scan of the room. Are there questions here for our speakers? Is there anyone who has any questions or do you need a little more time? Yes, two gentlemen, I mean one lady and one gentleman, so I'm going to ask the lady first. Do, what do they have, revolving mics for questions? Oh, I have the revolving Could you help with this? Thank you. If you don't mind just saying your name, uh, the organization or city you're associated with. Okay, I'm Kia Andreasson from Gothenburg. I'm deputy mayor there. Uh, I want to ask Vienna, uh, you told us that uh, car traffic decreased in a highway. <laughs> uh, it was very lot, it was 10% decrease of the traffic, car traffic. And I would like to ask what kind of measure did you take? What kind of actions? Or did you make a new road round the city? Or what? No, no, no. How Can could that? that happen? Yeah, it's the, 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 what I talked about was the traffic within the city. And uh, it's the, the percent of the, of the, um, of the, uh, not, not the small, the, the, uh, it's, it's uh, the trips made, mm. it's, it's the trips made, yeah. And we decreased it with enhancing t public transport, with fostering bicycle traffic, we we're, want we're to shift more to, to cycling in Vienna. There's still a lot we can achieve because uh, more people means more traffic. So we we got more people here and uh, we reduced it like it's like a 12% reduction, which means oh, no. in, 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 absolute, uh, in absolute numbers, which means uh, like it comes out that it's less, but still there's more people. So, but what we are doing is we're making a lot effort in, in public transport. We're still carrying on uh, constructing metro lines. There will be a, a new metro line project still in the coming in the years to come. We still do like a lot of other European cities. We do tram new tram lines. Vienna has a, a real great system of tram lines. It's it's about 280 kilometers of tram lines. So we really reach a lot of people, and we have the buses, and we are really enhancing um, the, the, the tra public transport system, and we try always to construct where there's public transport, or we put, we, for example, we got a smart city lab too, it's called Seestadt Aspen, it's the Vienna Lakeside project, which is we're uh, constructing a town for 25,000 inhabitants there, and with also the possibility to make like 20,000 uh, uh, workplaces there. So it's a big, big thing. And first thing we put there was a lake. <laughs> so that's the name it's got. Wasn't there, and the the metro line. So it it works already there, uh, and uh, the people, the first people already live there, and and with next year. There will be 6,500 people living there, so they ha already have a good uh, metro line system. And really, again, we're trying to foster walking. Uh, I also have to make some uh, commercial presentation. <laughs> Next time, Vienna is hosting the Walk 21, which is a, a big uh, congress on walking in cities, and it will be in October, I think so. So you're invited also there. <laughs> uh, and we are trying to, to get the people to cycling. It's not so easy in Vienna since, because we might not know it, it's the, the last Alpine city, so we're still part of the Alps. It's got r quite a relief, but there's big parts of it that are flat and uh, people want to be healthy, so that's what we're doing. And yeah, we have some pos policies also in car parking. We try to make it in the new urban developments centralized car parking so that the way to the parking cars is as, uh, at least as long or the same way that you have to go where you when you go to public transport 
Mm. These are a lot of things we're doing. I hope that was uh, helpful for the Deputy Mayor of Gothenburg. Thank you. And then we have a gentleman who has been patiently waiting. Hello, my name is Scott Landers. I'm with Geosyntec Consultants of the, based out of Boston, United States. My question is for Singapore. Um, you mentioned in your new uh, Ecolabs that you uh, are also incorporating smart water management as part of the, the real estate uh, health. And I was hoping you could tell me more about uh, what you do as far as stormwater management uh, as part of new developments and also the ability to um, use stormwater management as part of the smart city for retrofits. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, smart water management, um, just like to share with you that uh, in Singapore, um, I come from the public housing um, development and we look at the uh, public housing. We do have another agency, which is the Public Utilities Board. They actually look at water. We work closely with them and we are looking at a few areas that we can look into testing. Um, some of the things that we are looking at includes things like uh, WSUD, um, water sensitive urban design, um, where you actually uh, have things like bioswale, you have things like uh, eco ponds in order to hold the water, cleanse through natural um, sort of substrates so that um, there's need, less need of cleaning. The other area that uh, for public housing we're looking at is uh, water. Harvest, rainwater harvesting. Now, um, just to share with you a bit, um, we have quite a little bit of experience with rainwater harvesting. Um, first of all, it seems quite simple. You just put a tank on top of one of our roofs and you collect it. And then after which, they are just used for either landscaping or cleaning needs um, so that you don't use uh, potable water for those. Um, the only problem we face is that uh, because we live in a tropical climate, um, water do get uh, decommit. Um, you, you get contamination quite fast. So you really have to treat the water. And that uses quite a bit of energy uh, to do that. So we have to balance this. And also the return of investment is also quite high. We are looking at 400 years. We have did some studies. Wow. But um, we didn't stop there. We have tried to look into integrating things like, uh, because we have this um, flooding detention tanks needed, uh, currently, we are looking at how we can use them and double uh, them as uh, rainwater harvesting tanks. So, we did a little study. We are testing that out in our new um, this living lab, where we found that the return on investment can drop as much as we are looking at 30 to 40 years. Still not very ideal, but we are we we are not giving up. So it's a lot of uh, trial and error, but we are working with various key agencies on it. I hope that answers. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I assume uh, these presentations will be online, right? Um, available for... Mm. Any another room scan? More questions from the audience? Anyone? I want to make sure I'm not missing it because I have the light right in my eyes. I don't think so. So, well, 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 well. guess if I have a question for you then. <laughs> um, Yanjin, I would like to, um, first of all, again, thank you for, for your presentation. Um, and I would be keen to understand a little bit. Um, I remember, especially at the beginning of your PowerPoint, you listed several Chinese cities that I think are part of this Smart City Alliance right now. Um, and I'd love to know, uh, can you just point at some uh, key areas that these cities can, are working on, or is there any one of them that you would identify as kind of a leader already, um, maybe all of them, in the, in the smart city? And if so, for what particular reason? Oops. Is that clear? Is the question clear? Yeah. Uh 
，像上海这类的城市呢，它在做智慧城市，实际上是一个独立的体系，它有一套很好的机制创新。他应该是在一零年、一一年左右就开始做自己的智慧城市标准。这是上海，上海、北京都是搞得比较不错的。呃，即便是北京搞得好，但是大家也知道，现在北京的交通问题也还是很难解决，呃，还是有它的不足的地方。嗯、呃，再有一个我要提一下，这个其中的一个城市叫佛山。佛山是我们协会参与的比较呃紧密的一个城市。我们的方向就是希望它的一些智慧产业，或者是跟智慧城市周边的一些产业，能够很好的引入到佛山。不光解决它城市管理者的问题和市民真正的感觉到这个便利和智慧的问题，同时能够带动它的周边产业。因为佛山以前也是一个制造业的城市，现在希望把那些不环保的制造业能够，呃，移到其他地方，能有一些很好的产业进来。我们给它做咨询定位的时候，就定位到这个智慧产业引入。因此呢，我们协会在佛山建了一个华南物联网产业基地。就是希望能够，嗯，佛山除了智慧城市建得好，它的产业发展要能够走到一个非常实的一个一个一个路子上去。呃，这是佛山，还有一些做的比较好的，呃，比方说江浙一带的，呃，苏州、无锡这类的城市，实际上做的都不错。刚刚有观众问新加坡水资源管理的问题，实际上我们在长三角的很多呃城市也开始在水资源管理方面有一个很好的管控。嗯，包括它的这个水水资源的泛滥和水资源的有效利用等等的，也开始做这样的管理工作，就智慧水务的工作，在我们的长三角的一些比较发达的城市，呃，是这样的。然后像我刚刚提到的马纳斯这种小城市，实际上它是平安城市的需求。当然，这类的城市呢，呃，中央政府给的支持力度比较大，大部分都是全额买单的，政府全额买单，反而是大城市呢，只是出引导资金。嗯就是需要有一些企业有创新的商业模式参与到智慧城市建设中，不仅仅是靠政府给钱来建设，企业有运营模式可以跟政府一起来建设智慧城市，甚甚至分享智慧城市未来的收益，都是政府是愿意和企业一起去分享的。像我们的武汉，武汉实际上它的智慧城市建设是由国内的一家大公司全程参与，实际上就是城市的管理者和企业联合在搞智慧城市。是这样的，我刚才列举了呃中国一些比较有代表性的呃智慧城市建设的一个现状，有好的也有不好的，当然也有在建的，也有已经建的比较完善的。但是我觉得市场还是很大的，还是需要进一步的去努力，去加强它的建设。是这样，谢谢。不知道能否让您满意啊？Excellent. I think that uh, there, I think that there could be an opportunity here to compare your smart city clusters and see if there could be some some sharing. I assume that the typical triple helix stress clusters with private sector and public sector and academia. So it could be interesting for you guys to have a conversation after. So we just have a few minutes left, Andres. I am really curious to hear from you uh, since you you really have a the interesting task of having, uh, of, of, make, um, of basically modernizing and optimizing the operation in a, in a marvelous historic century, centuries old city. And so I'd love to hear, you know, some lessons learned in upgrading and creating and enabling infrastructure for a historic city with, with your kind of heritage particularly. Yes, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, it's um, a big question. Uh, I hope I can give a big answer. But it's it's like the city is the hardware, and and I think it's all all about software. We I, I I hope the cities will look in the future as they're looking now. The European cities. I don't want to have uh, a, a different prospection because they're really great. The thing is that you have to use them intelligent and they mm -hmm. are a, a really really good hardware so you we when the first city ranking by Boyd coin was made he's, he's here um, 
in, in 2011, Vienna turned out to be the smartest city on the planet. And this is not coincidence. This it could have been a, a different uh, European city also, I think. But it, it's about density. It's about mixed use. What do we have? It's about um, it's it's about people work and, and, and live and shop on a, a very, very short distance. Compact. Compact. And then we're doing our lessons. We, we're living in a, a, a climate that Austria is not the... Uh, Austria, uh, Vienna is not Barcelona. <laughs> clear. Well, so we have cold winters and we're doing really a lot of... In, in public housing also, Vienna has also really big efforts in public housing. It's really... We, we found out that we're so similar. Yeah, yeah it's true b because also about 80% of people are living in, in public housing, subsidized housing. Yeah, like and we're doing a lot of, of we're talking about passive uh, partners. Yeah, but now we're already going to talk about plus energy um, housing. Okay. And uh, there will be, the next session will be a guy from Vienna. This is a colleague of mine. He's the guy from the energy planning department. And now we're, we're starting to planning energy, uh, smart energy districts to, to try to get the, uh, the, the, the energy we need in the district. So, yeah, you have to be awake and you have to try to go new ways. But I think the, the hardware is great in, 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 in old towns. So it's, it's not about, and technology is so important because now we're talking about uh, l l slides that uh, transparent slides you can make uh, photovoltaic on the on your window still look out and right. everything is reducing so the future is there it's we don't know what what will be there but there are so, uh, uh, great solutions coming up that's 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 really great to hear so the the old and the new merging the compacted urban layout of these historic cities with the new technology <laughs> seems to be a good marriage okay so Speaking about next session, I know we have to, we have reached our time, so I would like to thank one more, uh, our speakers, and I look forward to more networking and questions and answers throughout the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you.